According to the United Nations, more than 1,000 journalists have been killed in the last 12 years for reporting the news and bringing information to the public. In 9 out of 10 cases, the killers go unpunished. In recognition of the far-reaching consequences of this impunity against journalists, the United Nations General Assembly marked 2nd November as the International Day to End Impunity for Crimes Against Journalists. This year's event was organized in Lagos by Safety and Security Watch with the theme Safety and Security Implications of Welfare of Journalists in Nigeria, the Media Perception. Panelists at the event called on journalists to make safety a priority. When we talk of safety of journalists and, um, and, and people in the media, it shouldn't be about how we respond to an emergency. It's about the structures in place to prevent Indeed, I would say that talking about impunity is already late. In safety and security, we are more preventive. The question is you should be celebrating World Day for preventive measures, not impunity. If I am dead, I am dead. If the incident has happened, it has happened. So I did say that we're working in a lagging manner in what we call safety and security, rather than a proactive manner. So I challenge all of you here and they go to the UN and say, no, we want a preventive day. What does that do? It gives responsibility to the stakeholders at inception, before commencement. It's easy to point a figure, you didn't do, you didn't do, you didn't do. What is most difficult is challenging the institution and the industries to provide a framework that mitigates those incidents. So should he have even been in that, it is possible he could have been. Was there a system to support him? Absolutely not. Now, because of what he went through, he died. It's not because all of us, somebody else could have sustained it. There is no structure. Journalists, associations, organizations must ensure that these things are put in place in terms of insurance, global insurance for everybody. Immediately, you're a journalist, you must be covered when you are going to volatile bits or not. And people must know, and employers of journalists must be compelled to do the necessary and the needful, so that people will be uh, convinced and will be uh, very enthusiastic about performing their duties. It is not only in work on areas. People are sent to go and do investigating journalism, journalism that might affect their safety and security. By the time they get to a certain point, they will just lose that vigor because they know that nobody is there for them. Some of the participants also shed light on ways to curb the menace in the society. First, have a profile of where the journalist is being released to, to go and do their job. If it's too risky, nobody wants the journalist to break news at his own at the expense of his life. We don't want to hear news that is broken by a journalist today and the journalist broke the news and died. It's not, it's not a gain to anyone. If it's risky, let's see it as a, as a risky area and should not be sent there. If it should be sent there, you will be sent there with a whole lot of security coverage. The press is also an industry and there are laws that are guiding operation of industries in Nigeria. There is uh, what we call the Employees' Compensation Act of 2010. Today, NSITF is operating that. Are the journalists in that, in that role? Are they being insured for anything? Uh, are there hazard allowance for, for the journalists? So these are a lot, there are a lot of things to be, to be looked at. Oh, talk about the safety and security of the journalists. Now, if we want to take it further, a, a journalist is assigned to cover an event. What is the risk assessment that has been done in that event? Okay, there is riot going on, and a journalist need to cover. Yes, they wear their beep and say this is a press. But again, the illiterate does not know what press is. Whoever wants to seek attention looks for the journalist because they know they will be covered. So those are the risk assessments that are supposed to be conducted before the journalist will embark on whatever role he is going to, to, to do, carry out in covering that event. So you find out that one, are there risk assessment conducted before it's embarked upon? Are there insurance cover for them? If there are not, what is the government doing 
today. Uh, today, Nigeria is a signatory to the to the second November uh, convention by the UN. Now, if we are doing that, what law has our government put in place to protect the journalists? So these things, issues are a lot. Myriad of issues that the journalists are exposed to in the industry. The first thing that needs to be done is an assessment of the structures in place for safety and security. As I said inside, it cannot be assessed on a situational basis, but from a long-term perspective, there need to be continuity and processes that are put in place from induction into the profession through support in recovery and rehabilitation. Employers of labor were also caught on to look into security and well-being of journalists. Employers of labor in the field of journalism should look inward towards the safety, security, health, and well-being of journalists. And this is very crucial, even at this time where journalists are made to work excess hours and having a whole of impact on their health and mental well-being. I think this needs to be looked at I mean, while creating structure in their employment um, paradigm. Why the United Nations is posed on sustaining its campaign against the menace, there are expectations that crimes against journalists will be eradicated completely. Messi Emmanuel for Plus TV Africa.